Good morning and uh, welcome back. Today is the second lecture of the series Learn Implantology. In this lecture, we learn about the classification of implant. Two aspects are being covered. First, from an exam point of view, definitions are important, classifications are important. This will be dealt separately. And from a clinical standpoint, let us see which system is good, how the system has evolved. You should not be carried away by the marketing people that this system is good, that system is, is good. Now let us see, let us evaluate from the history. Let us learn from the history. Well, welcome back. Now, what are all the different treatment options you give for a missing tooth? Suppose a patient comes to your clinic with a missing tooth. What are all the different treatment options for rehabilitation you give? One, of course, is a removable partial denture. But then there are a lot of shortcomings for the removable partial denges. One is you can the patient may feel a rocking uh, inside the mouth, and it is not a periofriendly thing. Like it give a lateral loading to the tooth, which is not uh, which is detrimental for the periodontium. Uh, periodontium can withstand any amount of vertical loading, but not a lateral loading because most of the fibers in periodon periodontal membrane is in oblique in nature. So it can withstand any amount of vertical loading. So that is not a good idea that you give a removable partial denture. Cast partial denture is okay because the rest seat will give a vertical loading. All right. So that is, you know, a one option you give, which is not uh, uh, very satisfactory for the patient because it uh, have, you know, a, a bite force also will be less with the removable partial dentures. The other option you give is a crown and bridge. For the past uh, uh, five or six decades, dentists were very fond of these treatment modality. Even patient was also used to this type of uh, treatment modality, which is quite a time tested one we can see. But the problem we face with these techniques are with these uh, treatment modalities, many a times this abutment tooth is, will be involved by, with caries. Studies is that Almost 25% uh, of abutment teeth is involved with caries within 15 years. And most often, we may have to perform root canal treatment for the abutment tooth. And uh, endodontic failure is also one reason we are, uh, we are not out. The study says, again, says that 50% of uh, you know, uh, tooth require endodontic treatment before delivering an FPD. So these are a few studies uh, which, uh, you know, uh, over a period of time uh, showed us this is also not a good idea. But definite indications are there. If there is definite indication, we should go for FPDs. And off late, the, the implants has evolved and which is a, of a good uh, success rate for this uh, replacement of a missing tooth. It is so happened that in my practice uh, a week back, uh, one of my maternal Andy called me on the phone and uh, told that I had a fall and both of the two central incisors got avulsed. I referred to a prosthodontist uh, uh, in her town, a non-person to me. And uh, though I, I suggested uh, an implant therapy, but prosthodontist motivated for a FPD. So after, uh, I mean, evening, the, she called me back again and uh, she told that the prosthodontist has trimmed her adjacent tooth, uh, that is lateral incisors, and she's having sensitivity, hell, a lot of problems. So uh, the point here is like uh, now that the people require quality treatment and the patients require uh, to replace uh, the teeth with a proper emergence profile without damaging the adjacent tooth. So, Implants is nowadays coming up for a, I mean, as a better option now. Now, let us, uh, uh, from an exam point of view, let us go to a few definition and let us go to the classification of implant. Uh, okay, now, what are implants? Implants is defined as an endosteal, alloplastic, biologically compatible material, which is surgically inserted into an edentulous bony ridge. Now, what is endosteum? You know, the implant is being placed between the cortical bone. So, between the cortical bone 
medullary space is there medullary bone will be there implants the screw uh, i mean screw form and even the endosteal implants are placed within the uh, uh, bet between the, the borders of the cortical plate and definitely it is an alloplastic material it is made of titanium and uh, titanium is very much biocompatible material and uh, in a surgical process it is inserted into adendalous threads to form to uh, uh, have that function of an uh, implant now let us see classify implant out of many years implant has evolved ever since Brana Marcus uh, devised the system in 1950s uh, it took uh, 20 or 23 years to form a I mean uh, evolve in uh, the uh, the evolution of uh, implants now different system has been tried and uh, with a trial and error basis basis it has evolved a lot so let us see though it is having an historic uh, importance only now the state of our technology is or method is endosteal implants alone and in endosteal implants we have only a specific type of screw retained implants is the state of art uh, you know uh, method for implantology now you should understand this because you should not be carried away with uh, all the systems are still there in the market but then you should not be carried away by marketing people to know or to understand uh, which is the best system and once you know the base of this you will, uh, will not be carried out with the, this all are things which has came into the market still there in the market still it is not a proven system by evidences now let us go uh, understand things with, with the evidences uh, in the industry the one system one such system is subperiosteal implant what is subperiosteal implants how does it make it is very simple you cut open the mucosa in the with uh, with a crystal incision you reflect the mucosa you take an impression of alveolar housing the real alveolar bone and within this impression you pour a cast and you fabricate a frame like this so in the frame you have few uh, stock which jet out or jet into the oral cavity and a danger is being fabricated within this frame like the rehabilitation is done with this frame so this type of implant is having certain you know shortcomings because the uh, there is a process called marsupialization happens here where the epithelium uh, start proliferating through along side along the sides of the stock and uh, go infect the uh, the implant uh, frame and uh, other disadvantage is like uh, once this type of implant system is having lateral i mean much rocking type of effect and uh, this frame will have much bone loss induce much bone loss in the alveolar housing so this type of implant system is not being used nowadays but it is there inside the uh, in uh, within the market now another system is called transosteal implants transosteal implants as the term denotes it's through and through transmits through and through so it is otherwise called staple implants staple you know uh, uh, it is like a frame is being screwed inside I mean, uh, uh, from the below side of the mandible, and a, a uh, covering uh, will be placed over the uh, inside the oral cavity, and screw is get tightened. So it is just staple it. We can have a thin frame of uh, mandible in between, and you have a uh, very large two frames. Those this system also is not uh, used nowadays, unless if you have a very thin atrophic mandible and. Uh, the patient medic, uh, I mean, medico, uh, medical status is good and uh, the patient is healthy. Now, the uh, technique used nowadays it falls under endosteal system. Endosteal system is a implant is being placed within the uh, limits of the cortical plate. So, inside the medullary bone and within the boundaries of cortical plate, the implant is being placed. And you have uh, two systems now like a blade implants what are blade implants you you prepare a trench uh, within the uh, be between the cortical plate a trench is being prepared and uh, a frame is be being tapped inside and you have a stock which comes out like this and a rehabilitation of posterior tooth is being done like this so but then there is you know many limitations see that it is in close proximity with the inferior alveolar nerve and uh, uh, this also uh, 
uh, has an advantage, a disadvantage like a martial martialization happen. Though this frame is very stable and uh, the resistant form of this uh, frame is good, but uh, because of uh, the crude procedure and uh, uh, very uh, difficult surgical procedure, this uh, form is not famous. But still, this form is being uh, there in the market and the people all uses this frame uh, this technique another uh, little more uh, you know uh, advanced system is like basal implants a, a newer form of disc implant here it is only a linear disc which is having a two dimensional disc only whereas if you have a, a circular disc in it uh, in a two or three disc in a fray in a, a stock it is called basal implant system it has come now reinvented the market again but this system is also having disadvantage because of the very barbaric uh, procedures which is involved to please these uh, I mean disc full buccal mucus is reflected and uh, this uh, uh, th this is being tapped from the side and it is being covered so only the stock project inside the oral cavity Another system which was used, which is not mentioned is here, is pin implant. You have, uh, uh, have you seen uh, a tripod of a camera? Likewise, he, he, it will have a three legs, which is coming in all the three direction. And uh, it is joined together at the, effect, uh, at the corona lens by a prosthesis. This type of implant was also used, but uh, because of the high failure rate, now it is not there in the market at all. Now, uh, the other form of implant system, which is, you know, uh, very famous and popular now is like uh, root form implants. In root form implants, you have two types like hollow cylinder and solid cylinder. And the latest version uh, is like screw type implant where the, uh, it forms a tapered and there is an advantage for this taper, tapered end system because uh, uh, because of the retrievability, screw retention, these type of implants are, you know, state of art technique now. And most of us use this implant system to, because of uh, predictability, uh, uh, retainability, maintenance, uh, and uh, options of prosthesis over the these type of implants. We almost 90-95% uh, percentage of uh, implant allergies, uh, are into this system. And uh, the point here is there are a lot of system with, uh, in the market. You should not be carried away by the marketing people that this implant system is having stability. This is, we should rely on evidences. And uh, now the state of our technique and uh, uh, the most popular uh, method is endosteal out of which uh, the screw type implants or root form implants are uh, uh, a good system. Now, these are a few pictures of uh, blade implants. The trench is being prepared and inserted. There is a stock which uh, having an apartment over it. This is a cylindric system, hollow cylinder. Uh, so advantage is, is that the bone cells can go inside and uh, the bone implant interface is going to be more. So the, this type of implant is having more uh, retention and retention inside the bone. And this is a solid uh, cylinder type of implant. Uh, uh, there are certain disadvantages of the, uh, this system. It is it is having more resistant and uh, uh, the screw retention uh, will be more. So in uh, D3 or D4 type of bone, this uh, implant, which is having a, a pitch of, uh, you know, thread the distance uh, of, of uh, more than a conventional implant can be used and they can be having sufficient primary retention so this is one implant system these are different treatment options or uh, i mean just to have a completion of the topic we will go to the prosthetic one later but just to understand how this system works, we have a fixture here and uh, there is a bar which has been connected between and screwed in so this uh, improves the overall stability of the implant and this female part is uh, incorporated inside the danger so the patient can uh, remove this danger and uh, have a good oral hygiene. The other system is a ball and socket system. You have a, a ball which is going inside the uh, socket which is placed inside the danger. And there is an o-ring in between. So you have a cushioning sort of effect. The o-rings can be uh, 
changed uh, after a couple of months so that the patient again will have a good uh, retention of the stenter and this cushioning cushioning will have will have a better effect since it is not having the periodontal ligament as such so the longevity of the implant will be more uh, with this cushioning so these are uh, another new version is locator uh, where the, it is not in the shape of a perfect bowl but then a flattened bowl so these type of locator also is uh, you know popular nowadays this is a conventional fpd which is made from an implant this partial denture which is screwed in the screw retained uh, you know, uh, implant so with this lecture hope you understood the basics of the classification of implants and uh, which is the best system and popular system used nowadays so we are winding up and uh, we are coming up with the next lecture of the series basic implantology that is designs and types of in implant so that will be a useful session please do watch it thank you